Domain The Money Moon, A Romance by Geoffrey Farnell Chapter 16 In Which Adam Proposes a Game To Be or Not to Be Bellow leaned against the mighty bowl of King Arthur and stared up at the moon with knitted brows. That is the question whether I shall brave the slings and arrows and things, and speak to-night and have done with it, one way or another, or live on a while, secure in this uncertainty, to wait, whether I shall, at this so early stage, pit all my chances of happiness against the chances of losing her, and with her, small Porges, bless him, and all the quaint, and lovable beings of this wonderful Arcadia of mine. For, if her answer be no, what recourse have I? What is there left me but to go wandering forth again, following the wind, and with the gates of Arcadia shut upon me for ever? To be or not to be, that is the question. Be that you, Mr. Bellew, sir? Even so, Adam. Come, sit ye a while, good knave, and gaze upon Diane's loveliness, and smoke, and let us converse of dead kings. Why, kings ain't much in my line, sir, uh, living or dead uns, me never having seen any, except a picter, and that tore, though very lifelike, but why I were a-looking for you was to ax you to back me up, and to, uh, play the game, Mr. Bellew, sir. Why? As to that, my good Adam, my gentle Daphnis, my rugged Euphemio, you may rely on me to the utmost. Are you in trouble? Is it counsel you need, or only money? Fill your pipe, and while you smoke, confide your cares to me, put me wise, or, as your French cousins would say, make me au fait. Well, began Adam, when his pipe was well alight, in the first place, Mr. Bellew, sir, I begs to remind you, as Miss Anthea sold her furniture, to raise enough money as, with what the ops will bring, might go to pay off the mortgage, uh, for good and all, sir. Yes. Well, uh, tonight, sir, Miss Anthea calls me into the parlour to ax, or as you might say, inquire as to the why, and likewise the wherefore of you a buying all that furniture. Did she, Adam? Ah! Why did he do it? says she. Well, to keep it from being took away, perhaps, says I, sharp as any gimblet, sir. Good, nodded Bellow. Ah, but it weren't no good, sir, returned Adam, because she says is how your own being in America, you couldn't really need the furniture, nor yet want the furniture, and blessed if she wasn't talking of handing you the money back again. Hum, said Bellow. Seeing which, sir, and because she must have that money if she hopes to keep the roof of Dapplemere over her head, I there and then made up, or as you might say, concocted a story, an anecdote, or a yarn, upon the spot, Mr. Bellew, sir. Most excellent, Machiavelli. Proceed. I told her, sir, as you bought that furniture on account of you being wishful to settle down, whereat she starts and looks at me with her eyes big and surprised-like. I told her, likewise, as you had told me on the quiet, or, as you might say, confidential, that you bought that furniture to set up housekeeping on account of you being on the pint of marrying a fine young lady up to London. What? Bellew didn't move, nor did he raise his voice. Nevertheless, Adam started back, and instinctively threw up his arm. You told her that? I did, sir. But you knew it was a confounded lie. I, I knowed it, but I'd tell a hundred, ah, thousands of lies, confounded or otherwise, to save Miss Anthea. To save her? From ruination, sir, from losing Dapplemere Farm and everything she has in the world. Lord love you, the ops could never bring in by themselves all the three thousand pounds as is owing. It ain't to be expected. But if that three thousand pounds ain't paid over to that dirty Grimes by next Saturday week as ever was, that dirty Grimes turns Miss Anthea out of Dapplemere, with Master Georgie and poor little Miss Priscilla. And what'll become of them, then? I don't know. Lord, 
when I think of it, the old Adam do rise up in me to that extent as I minded to take a pitchfork and go and skewer that there Grimes to his own chimbley corner. You see, Mr. Bellew, sir, he went on, seeing Bellew was silent still, Miss Anthea be that proud and independent that she'd never a took your money, sir, if I hadn't told her that there lie. So that's why I did tell her that there lie. I see, nodded Bellew. I see, yes. You did quite right. You acted for the best, and you did quite right, Adam. Yes, quite right. Thank you, sir. And so, this is the game I am to play, is it? That's it, sir. If she asks you, are you going to get married, you tell her, yes, to a lady as you have known from your childhood's hour. Living in London, that's all, sir. That's all, is it, Adam? said Bellew slowly, turning to look up at the moon again. It doesn't sound very much, does it? Well, I'll play your game, Adam. Yes, you may depend on me. Thank ye, Mr. Bellew, sir. Thank ye, sir. Though I do hope, as you'll excuse me for taking such liberties, and making so free with your art and your affections, sir. Oh, certainly, Adam. The cause excuses everything. Then good night, sir. Good night, Adam. So this good, well-meaning Adam strode away, proud on the whole of his night's work, leaving Bellow to frown up at the moon with teeth clenched tight upon his pipe-stem. End of chapter 16